quick reminders before we begin, as you silence all cell phones, no flash photography and no live video may be taken during the press conference. Uh, we'll take questions from the media room first and then we'll check in with the Zoom room. Please state your name and affiliation and who your question is directed towards before asking your question. This time, we have UConn on the dais, head coach Gina Oriana, and student athletes Leah Edwards and Paige Beckers. Coach, congratulations on the win. Uh, we'll you. begin with your opening statement. Uh, I don't know that I have, I don't know that I have one. Um, so I'll let you guys go right ahead with the questions for the, for the student athletes. All right, the floor is open. Let's start down here. Good shaper does not subscribe to that philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Aaliyah, another dominant game from Paige. You said yesterday, you know, you watch her do it in practice every day. I just wonder, like, are there times on the court that she does something and you're like, dang, that was pretty impressive? Or do you just shrug and think, well, Paige is just being Paige? Um, I mean, I'm not really surprised when the ball goes in the hoop for her, but some of the moves that she gets um, leading up to the bucket is pretty impressive. But um, that's just how Paige plays basketball, and it's beautiful to watch. But um, yeah, she does what she does in games and practice. Michelle. Hi, Michelle Smith from the next. Aaliyah for you first, and then Paige. Aaliyah, you came off the bench um, after being on for a while. You had a big jumper, got a big offensive rebound. You felt like you had come back. Did you feel like when you came back into the game that you had to make a quick impact? Um, well, coach drew up the play, told me to get a bucket, and that's what I did. And then um, I think down the stretch, we just all had to make plays, impact in different ways. It wasn't just me. It was a team effort, and I think that um, we could have made some better decision decisions, but you know, we survived and we advanced. And Paige, for you, is this that game was super frenetic, bodies on the floor a lot. It, is that a game where you feel your short bench more because it's just so physical and so, I mean, it was pretty hectic out there? Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, the game was very physical on both ends of the floor. Um, the pace was fast, um, both sides trying to push it. Um, so you, you feel it, but at this point of the season, um, you got to be mentally tougher. Um, everybody's got aches and, and boo-boos during this time, and it's just about who powers through it better, um, who's mentally tougher. Um, so it's just something we try not to really focus on. Can we get just a tiny bit more volume on the speakers, please? Next question. In the back. Uh, Vid Kumar with Texas Athletics. Uh, could you guys just talk about the, what the next 48 hours looks like for you, just the mental preparation for the next biggest game of your career? Um, tonight we'll be rest and recover, um, trying to get our bodies, take an ice bath, um, get treatment done, so trying to recover that way, get good sleep, and then tomorrow will be a lot of preparation. The next day will be preparation leading up to the game, but just balancing recovering with preparing for a great opponent and a great team um, on Monday. Alexa. Alexa Philp at ESPN, for either or both of you, uh, being able to hold Duke to only 18 made field goals and force 23 turnovers, what did you think was working so well in the defensive end, especially because you guys weren't you know, scoring in the 60s or 70s yourselves? I think uh, defensively we were just playing uh, smarter than we did on the offensive end, but um, I think that we took care of those possessions on the defensive end, made sure to make sure not to get them out of their flow. I think that we did a good job just um, disrupting and um, being effective that way. Do we have other questions for our student athletes? In the back. Uh, Luke Evans, Warren County Register. Paige, you said post game, you obviously don't get into the media, you know, one-on-one -on -one matchups and this and that, but just from a purely on-court standpoint, playing Juju on, on Monday, do, do you look at that and think, you know, that, that's a matchup I want to take on defensively to try and slow her down a little bit with everything that she can do for USC, or do you just kind of leave that to the game plan? Uh, leave it to the game plan. Um, let the scout be the scout. Um, I know with a great player like that, it's not an individual defensive assignment, but it's a team defensive assignment. So. It's every, everybody's responsibility to try to limit her touches, limit her shots, um, contain her. 
um, like a great player like that, it's best to not even let her get the ball. So I'm sure we'll work on it, um, go through it on the scout, um, and leave it up to the game plan. Back to Alexa. Paige, KK had a really impactful game on both ends. What did you see from her, and how did she really kind of rise to this moment? I just saw her being confident in her movements and what she wanted to do, the spots she wanted to get to on the floor on offense and defense, disrupting, um, just being KK, just being pesty, um, pushing the ball up the floor, getting into the lane, creating from there, um, and then pressuring the ball and getting deflections, getting steals um, on defense. So her just being confident, not thinking, and just playing her game. I thought she did a great job tonight. Any other questions for our student athletes? All right, we appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow. I don't know how much time's left. All right, we'll open it up to uh, questions for Coach Oriama. Alexa? Alexa Philpu, ESPN. Gino, did that, sp specifically the first half, did that remind you of the national title game against Stanford? <laughs> That one of those games. <laughs> uh, yeah, except uh, we were on the wrong end of that one, you know, in the first half. Um, you now Duke's a terrific defensive team. Um, they do a tremendous job of um, uh, taking away some of your strengths and making you make uh, make plays that are not necessarily scripted. Um, you have to make great reads. And um, it was really hard in the beginning, you know, because you felt like uh, they have 13 points at halftime. And I felt like we should have 30. And, you know, It you know, always comes back to get you when you leave a lot of points on the table. Um, but scoring was not going to be easy tonight. At both ends, they weren't going to have an easy time scoring against us, and we weren't going to have an easy time scoring against them. Um, and to one other question, that was it, you know, the, the fatigue factor became a big issue because uh, it forced us to change our game plan, you know, like Paige was saying, we got up 20 because we just pushed it, pushed it, pushed it. And then I felt like, okay, we need a, we need a breather here or we're not going to be able to finish the game. And I think by doing that, we got a little bit, you know, kind of took a deep breath. You know, we were exercising and then we decided to have a cigarette and then we didn't feel like exercising anymore. So... It was hard for us to get back into the flow of things. and um, But I knew scoring was going to be very, very difficult. Very difficult on both ends. Gina, Michelle Smith from the next. Bringing Aaliyah back in, bringing her back into the game and having her hit that quick jumper and again that O board, that ended up being huge for you guys. She says you just told her to go in and get a bucket. I don't know that it works that way. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sometimes, sometimes dreams do come true, you know. Um, we had a play earlier coming out of a timeout uh, where we were going to isolate Aaliyah. And um, it was very simple. KK, uh, KK, take the ball, pass it to Aaliyah, and get the hell out of the way. And um, we go out there, and KK goes, ah, I don't feel like doing that. And she just goes in and gets her shot blocked by three people, not just one. And uh, sometimes you wonder, you know, like whether I need an interpreter for these young guys. I know I just turned 70, but I think I still speak English. You know, I didn't revert back to, like my mom, when she got to a certain age, she reverted back to only Italian. I thought, I still speak English. I don't understand why that didn't translate very well. But we did feel like their pressure was so hard on, on our wings that Aaliyah was going to have some breathing room. And uh, I, I felt like she could either get a layup or get a wide open jump shot. Um, and 
thank God it, you know, that was a big shot, huge shot. Um, we've made we've made some big play, big plays the last two games when we really had to. I'm really, I'm really proud of that. Tim, Gino Tim Booth from the AP. Um, you talked about scoring being tough at both ends tonight. What did you feel like you guys did defensively really well, especially in the first half? Yeah, the first half I thought we were we were very disciplined, very active, and we're, we were quick to the ball. You know, I thought I thought if we could take away a lot of the lanes to get to the basket and force a lot of jump shots and just really clog things up. Um, and we did a great job of that. Um, and I thought as the game went on, we either got mentally or physically tired. We stopped getting to our spots, you know, and, and they, they started to exploit those, those driving lanes. Um, you know, you, you, when you get to this point, you know, final eight games, sweet 16 games, nobody just – gets down 15, 16, and says, ah, hell with it. You know, we'll get the next one. And there is no next one, so everybody plays their butt off to the end. So you knew it wasn't, you know, wasn't going to last the way that we were making it look really easy there in, for a while in the third quarter. But um, we couldn't sustain it. We couldn't sustain it. Vay Kumar with Texas Athletics. Congratulations, Coach, on the win. Um, Thank you. You know, everybody wants to talk about, you know, the matchup against USC with Paige and um, just the one-on-one -on -one matchup. But looking at it in a bigger scheme, you've been here. You've done this before. So how do you prepare this team for in the next 48 hours once again just to really lock in and, you know, go out there and give their best effort? <clears throat> um kind of what I said, I mean, at this time of the year, you, um, you have, um, you're staring at the end of your season. So I think players play with a certain amount of desperation and passion and, um, you know, the, some of our upperclassmen, they've played in, They've lost in the Final Four. They've lost in the Sweet 16. And they've lost the National Championship game. So they've, they've had a lot of experiences throughout their four years here. So, you know, they, they, they understand that it's USC versus UConn, not Page versus Juju. Because if we try to make it that, and this has happened a lot, Somebody on their team will get 30, and then we'll all go home and go, yeah, we lost, but we did a great job on Juju, man. Congratulations. You know, it, it's got to be our team versus their team and uh, see how it plays out, you know. And I'm sure they're not, you know, they're not out there thinking, um, you know, let's spend all our energy guarding Paige. Lindsay. Lindsay Schnell, Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Gino, Paige has talked about, you know, last season she just was so emotional. She wanted so badly to play in the tournament and that she prayed a lot that she would be given that opportunity again. You've obviously helped a lot of players navigate being injured, but I wondered how did you make sure that, you know, her spirit wasn't broken? The one thing that, the one thing that Paige is very, very good at which I think all great, great players and great leaders, they're, they're very, very great. They're very, very good at hiding the things that will make them look like they're struggling or suffering or they're, uh, they're non-confident anymore, uh, woe is me mentality. They're very good at hiding it. And, Paige would come to, to, the, uh, to the practice facility every day last year to do a rehab and, you know, watch practice or whatever, and she was always the most upbeat, positive person in the gym. You knew that when she, was, when, when, when she went home, she was a completely different person at home. You knew that it was killing her and tearing her apart. But great players like that, they, you know, they, 
they carry a light around with them, you know, because she's a, she's a positive player that shines light on other people. We all know people that they live in darkness, right? The minute they walk in a room, everybody just goes, ugh. You know, they just suck the life out of the room. She's the opposite. She shines light on everywhere she goes. But privately, yes, it tore her apart. Um, I only saw it manifest itself once. We were, we were playing at Tennessee. And, you know, you come to UConn, you know, you want to play in a Tennessee game. Even though it's not the same, it's still UConn-Tennessee, and it's at Tennessee. And, and I saw her break down in the locker room that game. That, that was the first time I had seen it. Um, so I, I know that playing in this tournament this year is why she worked so hard for 12 months to, um, to put herself in position to do this. Um, you know, players like her, the players in this tournament, you know, like every, every player, but players like her, Juju and Caitlin and Angel Reese, and, you know, you can name them, you know, Cardoza and all those great players that South Carolina has. They live for these games, you know, regular season games are regular season games. But, you know, these kids, this is what they, this is what they dream of when they go to college and play basketball. And if their dream's taken away from them, it's like they're half a person. And some people are just miserable and let it beat them. And some people, they, they don't let that happen. And Paige is one of those people. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Coach, thank you very much, and we will see you tomorrow. I'm going to go bathe my drink in some ice. I'm going to get a nice bath. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Well, I've Duke momentarily. There has been a.